In this lesson, I want to talk about the difference between displacement and total distance traveled. Um, so displacement... Displacement is basically the change in position between times, you know, between times A and B, right? So it's nothing more than how much did the object's position change. The way that we compute this is by doing the integral from A to B of the velocity function with respect to time. And this should make sense, like, and, and, and like, yay, that, that's it, you, you do that integral. This should make sense, because think about what the integral of velocity is. The integral of velocity is supposed to be position, so it's like, what's the position at B minus what's the position at A? So in other words, you know, if, if the object, for instance, started out at position 7 and ended at position 5, the object's displacement is 2. Now note, that does not mean that it traveled 2 units. Right? And I'm going to cover that difference in just a minute. Let me, let me talk about total distance traveled. Um, total distance traveled. Total distance traveled. I don't even know how to describe this. This is the total distance traveled. Like, it's how far did the thing go. And the way we compute that one is by doing the integral from A to B of the absolute value of V of T dt. Right, so you actually need to take an absolute value. So either use your calculator and do the absolute value button, or any area that's negative we actually count as positive. Now, I, I do want to take a minute to talk about the difference between these two things. Right? Let's take an example that's kind of like the one I just said. Let's say that an object starts at position 7. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it starts here, and it ends here. We can tell that the displacement is 2. But we don't know for sure that the object simply started at 7 and went to 5. For all we know, it may have gone from 7 over to 10, from 10 back to 2, and then from 2 back, oh, whoops, back over to 5. Right? In this case, it still started at 7 and ended at 5. Its displacement is still 2, but its total distance traveled you should never abbreviate it TDT, that's just me abbreviating it for, for these purposes. The total distance traveled, well, it went 3 units here, then it went 8 units going from 10 back to 2, and then it went 3 more units going from 2 back to 5. So the total distance traveled here is, you know, 21. So these two things can be completely different from one another. Displacement is simply what is the change in position, and we do that by doing a simple integral of velocity. The total distance traveled is literally how far did the thing go, and we do that by doing the integral of the absolute value of the velocity function. So I've got two examples of this. One of them is a non-calculator problem using a graph. The other is a calculator problem uh, that doesn't use a graph, so we'll, we'll get into those next. All right, so in this one, I want us to use our calculator to determine the total distance traveled by the particle by a particle with that velocity between between time zero and three. So, I mean, I hope we know from this lesson, total distance traveled means that you do the integral of the absolute value of the velocity function. And I suppose one option would be to graph this thing on your graphing calculator, and I'm I'm not going to pretend entirely to know what this thing looks like. Um, sign actually starts there. You know, now that I think about it, eh, we'll, we'll leave it alone. Um, you, you, you'll you have some shape, you know, if the thing had some shape, you could think about reflecting some of these areas up and calculating them that way. But the better option is that there's actually an absolute value button on your calculator. If you hit the math button, and then hit the sideways arrow to get over to the num, the numbers menu, the first option there is ABS parentheses. In the older versions of the calculator, it'll actually bring up ABS. If you punch it now, so on your calculator now, if you hit math 9, it'll bring up your integral symbol, so you'll type in 0 and 3. Then if you do this absolute value button, it'll actually put an absolute value bar in your problem. So then we can just put in x squared sine x and it'll, you know, close the absolute value for dx. If you actually throw all of that at your calculator and, and hit enter, 
it'll come up with what the answer is for us. Um, and that answer from the calculator is 5.777. And that's our answer for that one. Um, in some sense, this was a little bit of a silly example, because I think if you left out the absolute value bars, you might have actually gotten the same answer anyway. Um, but it's in incredibly crucial that you guys recognize when you're finding total distance traveled, you have to have those absolute value bars. If you don't have them, then what you're finding is displacement. You're not actually finding the total distance traveled. Um, that's all I've got in this video, so I'll see you in the next one.